Hello and welcome to Matt the Groundhopper channel. I'm going to be focusing on episode 2 today of Who's Bigger and just like to thank everybody who's commented and who's subscribed so far to the channel. Episode 1 last week which was Sheffield United, Sheffield Wednesday, Who's Bigger had a pretty decent response, sort of really mixed reactions from fans. I think I've answered everybody's questions and comments. But thank you to everybody that's getting involved, really trying to build the channel. So it's very much appreciated my end. If you haven't seen that video, by the way, make sure you click on click on that video, have a quick look. But today is episode two, and we are going to be focusing on two new clubs north of the border, and it is going to be Dundee versus Dundee United. Who is bigger? Let's take a look. Okay, so let's put Dundee as a city into some sort of context. So Dundee, population of 148,000 people, making it the fourth largest city in Scotland. And you have two football teams that pretty much split the city right down the middle. And I think what's unique about these, these two clubs is both the grounds, they both own their own ground, Tanner Dice and Dens Park, located on the same road, which I think is unique in the world. For two clubs to have their own grounds on the same road and to get it the facts completely correct they are 183 meters apart so that's unique in itself and if you look on google street view you can quite clearly see the grounds pretty much within spitting distance of each other so just a quick question you know i'm always fascinated how it works with fans where you've got two teams in the same city so how does it work with dundee and dundee united fans i think it's well documented in other parts of Scotland, why fans support their teams in Glasgow and in Edinburgh. But how does it work in Dundee? Because it can't be geographical because you're both on the same road. So is there any sort of method to this madness or is it just does it just go back several generations? Let me know. Drop a comment. I'm, I'm always fascinated to hear from the actual fans itself. And just educate me, really, because I'm sure there's a lot of people that be sort of interested to know why you are a United fan or you're a Dundee fan. So, I mean, I have read in the past that both clubs have looked into basically sharing a ground, building somewhere within the town, closing both Tanner Dice and Dens Park, you know, developing them for housing, etc., etc. But, I mean, the fans, from what I've read, were heavily opposed. Both sets of fans were heavily opposed to sharing a ground. I mean, look, if you're, if you're watching this video from abroad, you know, the logical thing you'll be thinking, well, why don't they just close both grounds, build a brand new all-purpose stadium, they can share the costs 50-50, job done. But, you know, British football does not work that way. I mean, these clubs have got well over 120 years of history between them. And clubs in the UK, they just don't share grounds. Unless it's forced upon them where they had to close their own ground and they become a tenant somewhere in another ground, it's against their will almost, but clubs willingly do not share football grounds in the UK if I'm wrong, let me know. If you're a Dundee or Dundee United fan, please let me know. Comment. Tell me. What do you think? So, just before we go on to the rounds, I just want to share a quick fact with you. It's about Dundee. So, Dundee, along with Motherwell, share the biggest attendance at a game that does not involve Rangers and Celtic. And that was the 1952 FA Cup final, and there were 136,495 fans there. So, just put that into some context, just under 137,000 people at Hamden to watch a cup final. I mean, God, they must have been packed in like sardines. This must have been quite incredible. Like, but what an atmosphere, like, you know? So, yeah, so that's, um, I wasn't expecting that. That's a, that's a decent little fact there. Um. So, moving on to the rounds, rounds one to eight. Got a new round today. Thank you to Andy, who commented on the Sheffield video. And he pretty much said to me, look, why don't you include social media following? Because that determines the size of a club as well. So, I've done it. So, it's a new round seven. Social media following, which really, which is the combination of Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, which gives you a number. The other, round, the other seven rounds are the same. So, let's go to round one and let's make a start.
into round five, and this is the 10 year average attendances. Had a couple of questions and comments from people asking why I don't do it up to the current season. Um, I've, I've stopped it just before COVID, so it gives you a block of 10 seasons in a row. I didn't do it over code, obviously, because there was no fans at the grounds. And then it was just sort of skewing the stats a little bit. So I've decided to stop it just before COVID. We got Dundee's average attendance over 10 seasons was 5,605, which I think they spent quite a few seasons in the championship. And um, Dundee United average attendance over 10 years was 7,144. But again, most of their seasons were in the Premier League. I think they had four years in the Championship. So I mean, I'm mean, i quite surprised by that. I thought there'd be more level pegging, but if there was both in the Premier League for the same amount of time, I think it would be closer than that. But on this round, Dundee United win. <laughs> round six. So if you haven't seen this feature before, I've basically devised... A points tally for every season you spend in the Premier League, which is four points per season and three points for every season you spend in the Championship. And the reason I've done that is so I can create a points tally for both sides. It means I can compare and contrast and then award a point for this round. So, um, so starting with Dundee, in the last 20 years, they have spent nine seasons in the Premier League and 11 seasons in the Championship. So they've been a bit of a yo-yo club up and up and down. They don't tend to spend much time in the Premier League, but yeah. So 9 in the Prem, 11 in the Championship, that's giving them 69 points. Uh, with Dundee United, they've been a bit more consistent. They In the last 20 years, they've been in the Premier League for 16 seasons and they had that time of four years with a block of four seasons in the Championship where they had four seasons and that's given them on the points basis, 76 points. And then they will win this round, 76 points to 69, which means they win round six. <laughs> New round, round seven, social media following. So I've broken this up into three, that's sort of the main three, and there's other, there's other platforms, but it'll just get silly otherwise. So I've broken it up into Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Start with Dundee. Dundee got 54,000 Twitter followers. So, yeah, decent number. 19,000 on Facebook and 22,000 on Instagram. That gives them a combined total of about 95,000 followers. Obviously, some of them could be the same followers. I get that. They follow on Twitter and Instagram, but you get the gist. And Dundee United, 72,000 on Twitter, 88,000 on Facebook, and 35,000 on Instagram, so that gives them one hundred and seventy-five thousand. So it's a see a much bigger, much bigger following. Whether they promote themselves more on, on on social media, as in Dundee United, I don't know. But but that's a almost double. So I'm going to have to ward round seven to Dundee United for a bigger social media following. On to the eighth and the final round, on to the honours. Before I state the official honours, got a couple of other bits and pieces that both clubs have won, or the achievements. So Dundee United have won two Challenge Cups, and Dundee have won one Challenge Cup. I mean, I haven't included this because I don't th even think this club's taken that seriously, that trophy, but, but they've won it, but it's not in the points tally. And... Dundee have made a European Cup semi-final in 62-63 season and Dundee United made the European Cup semi-final in the 83-84 season, which has some achievement, like, you know, I'm quite impressed with that. I mean, that would just wouldn't happen now with the Champions League. Just to put it on record, I absolutely hate the Champions League, by the way. I just um. can't stand I, I preferred it when it was the European Cup. I'm of an age, I can just about remember the European Cup, knockout football from round one, before all this group games, and they're going to expand it even bigger. And I just, I just can't stand the Champions League. I hate it. But, um, but back in the day, you had results where Dundee United could get to the semi-final of a European competition, a big one like that. So, yeah, so that's quite impressive. But, um, so moving on to the the main honours. So I award points, sort of five points for 
a Premier League win, four points for Championship, three points for FA Cup, three points for League Cup, and I've also got a European um, sort of points allocation system as well now. So Dundee have won one sort of top flight Premier League. They've won five championships, one FA Cup and three League Cups, but they haven't won or been runners-up in any European trophies, so they have a total of 37 points. Moving on to Dundee United, they've also won one championship. That was in 1983. By the way, if, if you haven't seen that, and this isn't a dig at Dundee fans, but type in on Google, Dundee versus Dundee United, 1983, and Dundee United actually won their one and only one and only league title in 1983, and they won it at Dundee. And it's a really good bit of footage on, on YouTube. Proper old school football. I think it was 29,000 at Dens Park that day. Absolutely rammed to the rafters. Terracing behind both goals. Really muddy pitch. Just brilliant, brilliant retro football. If you haven't seen it, I really recommend watching it. It's only a couple minutes long, but yeah. So anyway, moving on. So Dundee United have won one uh, Premier League. They won three championships, two FA Cups, two League Cups. And there was runners-up in the UEFA Cup in the 86-87 season. So on my little points tally, they've managed to achieve 30 points as opposed to Dundee's 37 so on this round, Dundee have won. However, controversial because a lot of the um, points that Dundee have accumulated were championship wins. And, you know, the argument could be Dundee United were in the top flight then. But anyway, but Dundee, United, uh, Dundee sorry, win this um, round eight, 37 points to 30. So at the end of round eight... There you have it, it is Dundee United 6, Dundee 2, and you know, if I'm being honest, I thought Dundee United might win, but I'm quite surprised by that scoreline. Uh, let me know if you think, if you, dis if you disagree, leave a comment, let me know, but I'm being completely unbiased, as I always say, I'm just looking at facts, looking at stats, and Dundee United have come out on top. Um, next, my next um, Who's Bigger video will be Cardiff versus Swansea. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, please like, and please comment. And if you haven't seen my ground hopping videos, basically what I'm doing, I'm ground hopping all around the UK. Uh, Going to be heading to Scotland uh, at the weekend, looking to do hopefully a triple header up there. So look out for my Scottish videos coming up next week. But thanks for watching, and I'll see you in my next video. Many thanks.